Let's take a look at some children who are trying really hard to talk, but most of their attempts are unclear to an unfamiliar listener. Listen closely and imagine that you cannot see what it is that he wants. If you had to rely only on his vocalizations, would you be able to understand what it is that he is requesting? Swing. Good job. You have heard Niall say, sing. A nice attempt, but not clear. Swing. Again, a nice attempt, but not clear. Paint. 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 Good job. So it get frustrated. That's good. You may have heard that brush and paint were not even close. You can see how easy it is to get caught up when a non-vocal child begins to talk. However, even when motivation was very strong, most of Niall's attempts to speak were not very clear to an unfamiliar listener. Therefore, augmentative communication is needed. Generally speaking, sign language and picture systems can be easy for your child to learn. However, sign language, far and away, provides more opportunities for your child to practice. Because your hands are always with you, you can sign in more environments and do so more often. For example, you can sign in the swimming pool, when you're laying in bed in the evening, at a picnic or other community outing, on a swing, playground equipment, and things of that nature. Let's take a look at a couple of videos to illustrate this point. You can see it would be very difficult for Caitlin to express her desire to roll using another system. Now let's take a look at another example. Not only does Daryl get the opportunity to sign for swing on many occasions, but he also loves to spin and can actually sign spin while he's moving pretty fast. This is an extremely important issue because active play is an important part of programming for a child with autism, or at least it should be.